Hi, Blast Pop here. Today I'm looking at Swords and Sorcery by SPI, published in 1978. Uh, the game designers are Gray Kostikian and Eric Goldberg. Uh, this is a fantasy-based game, as you can see uh, on the cover. Uh, this art illustration was designed by John Butterfield, also a famous game designer in the war game realm. Um, this is the second edition, or the, sec the second cover. You'll see what the original cover looked like shortly. Uh, this is an ar typically an army-based game, uh, and there's also a character-based game where there's a certain amount of role-playing and uh, going on uh, various um, quests and such. Uh, but the, this game, at its uh, core, is a fantasy war game with leadership and special abilities and a lot of flavor. Uh, comes in an SPI box, about a two-inch size box. A little bit about the information, moderate complexity, three hours, solitaire suitability, moderate. And uh, interestingly, the no advertising on the back of the box. Uh, you get approximately 400 counters, and you have all the various uh, empires, you know, the empires, the orcs, the um, cronks, the killer penguins, the goblins, um, elves, and so on. So there's, there's a lot of um, different forces. I like the iconography uh, on the counters. The counters are in my counter tray here, which actually came with the game. Uh, the counters themselves, movement and combat, and they're brown core, thin, typical of the era, perfectly serviceable, a matte finish. Uh, you have leaders and such also. In case the case is a demon. And then the penguins, killer penguins. And then you have leadership. Let's slug off here. A lot of different scenarios in this game, a lot of different compositions of forces. And I'll get more into that. Cards. These are the punch-out kind of cards. Thin. Um, killer penguins. Kind of thin. You kind of have to be careful. They're probably best sleeved, actually, if you get smaller sleeves. Uh, equipment. Characters, Pig Leg Gonzo, um, and then for this one here, the, he's a monster, the Demon Yagith. You have his various statistics, and um, Wendell in the Wary, Elmerak, Raymond Kronkovich, um, Kronkovich, um, which kind of reminds me probably of Walter Cronkite. I don't know. May Twist. Gygax, Dragonlord. I wonder what the um, person is who that's supposed to represent. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Um, Theragon, the Mage. Zarko. Paladin, the Glade. This game is just full of references, both private and public. For who these characters and locations represented. A lot of private jokes in this game. Um, this, and here's what the original cover looked like uh, with a blue background. And um, give you a sense of why they, they changed the covers, I think. Starts off the rules book with an extensive. Um, the resurgence of the old races, a good, good story of three pages. 
you have your um, uh, list of roll sections, all the various types of units, what they represent. Again, I like I like this old style SPI iconography, and then I mean, you, it, it's it's a truly a, a war game in the army game. You have random events. You have alliances, zones of control, stacking, movement, spells, magic, the various types of spells that are listed. Uh, you can essentially even raise a, an SS Panzer Division Viking, if I recall correctly, uh, with the proper spell and power to do so. Um... Special terrain types, diplomacy, army games, rules, scenarios, and then there's a boatload of scenarios of ver varying sorts in terms of the numbers of players and the length of time. The War of X, the War of the Great Sword, and what I remember I haven't had not have played in years is that uh, some scenarios were more balanced than others but they're supposed to be historical scenarios for a fantasy game such as it is so it comes with 14 scenarios to start additionally on board game geek is a lot of additional resources with some additional scenarios errata optional rules play aids etc so there's quite a bit available also is a quest game which is a subset uh, of the army game with all kinds of spells, searching and contact, uh, truly a game on its own. And then they have a whole set, and we're not going to go in much further with respect to that. But again, you also have further histories of the characters, so it's well fleshed out. And that comes in at 56 pages of fairly dense text. So there's a lot of goodies in this package here. There's two player charts and tables, booklets. And SPI was onto something here. I, I kind of liked all the rules, references, charts, tables, whatever the game in particular had, all under one cover, instead of like maybe two or three separate charts that you have to kind of shift back and forth. No, I mean, this is simple. There's staple couple sheets of 11 by 17 paper stapled together but I, I like it each player's got what they need and it's mostly a two-player game for the most part um, at least my experience of it is it's hard to get that many more people to play the game than, than two in any case you got a wandering monster table the game isn't complete in the fantasy world without a wandering monster table army search table swords and sorcery spell summary random events Killer Penguin Entry Table, um, Magic Search Table, and then they have a solar display which impacts the power of magic based on the red, the red sun and the blue sun and how they interact and it impacts the amount of spell power people have. You have a diplomacy uh, display using a big hex grid. To show how one nationality is lines up with an opponent or not, uh, whether they're friendly or not, and the closer you're drawn to one player or one na nation, the further it is from another, which means they're less friendly. If I recall that correctly, and then you have a personal combat table for the um, quest game. And then we have the map. This is rather interesting. Uh, up to the north here, you have a place called the Citadel of Blood, which later became a SPI dungeon, random dungeon, dungeon uh, quest type game, um, which was neat. So it came off of this little valley and universe um, 
down here it's hard to read, but it's Hill of Avalon. Hmm, I wonder what game company they're referring to there. Um, you have all kinds of little empires here, or provinces. You got the, the main road, you've got uh, dots here are capitals, you've got ruins. Um, big river and a bridge to fight over and uh, you've got the convivial mountains in convivia um, gateway of you I just a mountain of gray moor and this one cracks me up Natalie Woods the late actress. So there's all kinds of private and not so private jokes going on here on this board. This is where vortexes can start. This board is really well done. I like the art style. It's got a sedate look to it, but yet it's interesting to look at. And with the careful use of the limited art of the time, and um, fonts, it does feel like a fantasy world. I like it very much. A classic game. Highly recommended. Sort of in the same vein. At, uh, totally different rules and stuff, but an own, a game with like its own little universe and all kinds of history. Much in the same way as Dragon Pass by... Chaosium, and later republished by Avalon Hill. And there's some other international editions as well. So, really a cool game. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Also, there's a link to donate to the channel via PayPal if you wish to support the efforts of this channel. This has been Blast Pop. Bye.